In 2018, Michigan voters elected a new governor, Gretchen Whitmer. In its new series, Inside Michigan Government, the Michigan Advance will be sitting down and talking to leaders of key state departments about what they do, as well as problems and solutions for Michigan. Paul Ajaba, Director, Michigan Department of Transportation. Uh, I was born and raised in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. I came to the United States when I was 19 to go to college. Um, I attended uh, Prairie View and M University for my undergrad in civil engineering, and then um, the master's program at the University of Michigan. Uh, during the time I was in grad school, I was open-minded about you know where I end up. Uh, my last semester at the University of Michigan, there was a career fair going on, and I attended the career fair. I stopped in at the MDOT booth, gave them my resume. I got called in for an interview. Interviewed, and I got hired in in 1990. So I've been with the department almost 29 years. Being appointed by by the governor, it's it's a great great opportunity for me. I, I thank the governor for for giving me this opportunity, but it's also a challenge because at the at this point where we are at a crossroad, as the governor said, we have a choice to make: Are we going to invest in our infrastructure? or we're gonna stay with the status quo. Uh, I think me having a 29, almost 29 year experience in the department so has you know, been a good thing to contribute to that conversation that, hey, I, I, I was here. I know some of the decisions that, I made, that were made to get us to this point. Uh, how we got here is 40 years of this investment. But, but the question is, how are we going to dig us, how are we going to climb our, our way out of this hole we dug ourselves into, right? And that's what her plan is about. Um, this is what it's going to take. I, I, I go back, I, I really give the governor a lot of credit. When we met with her during the, this preparation, budget preparation, she asked, what is it going to take for us to fix this problem? And we gave the governor the number, and she not, she said, that's what we're going to take to the people. And if this is what it's going to take to solve the problem, then that's what we're going to do. And that, to me, is bold leadership, saying let's solve this problem once and for all. Uh, so that, that's where we are. We are trying to educate the public about the need to do something now. Because there's a study that says if, if when you have a, a roadway that's in fair or poor condition, if you spend a dollar to keep it there, uh, it saves you 6 to $14 if you let it drop into the poor category. To bring it back out of the poor category to the, to the good condition, it costs you a whole lot of money. So uh, at some point, we did not make the right decision to spend that $1. So we had a lot of roadways uh, fall into the poor category. Now that's why it's going to cost us uh, this much money to, to get us out of it. The beauty of the governor's plan is that, okay, this is not just solving the transportation problem. It's also solving the general funds problem. Also solving the school aid funds problem. Right now, we've got a lot of shell game going on. Uh, for us as MDOT, quite frankly, our budget is not quite, uh, you know, we, we have uncertainty in, in the way our budget is distributed. Right now, in, in 2015, the legislature passed a bill saying um, there's $1.2 billion for roadway improvement, right? Of that $1.2, only $600 million is guaranteed. The other $600 million is supposed to kick in in 2021, and that's supposed to come out of the general fund. So it's not really guaranteed. If the money is there, if the state is not in red, you get the money. But a new legislature in 2021 may say, we never committed to this. We, 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 don't, we, just, we just can't afford to give you extra $600 million. The way the funding distribution works in Michigan is this. We have this Public Act 51. So a law that was passed in 1951 that says, MBA, you get 39% of it and then the locals get about 60, 61%, right? So when that bill was passed in 2015, 
even though MDA was on record as saying we need $1.2 billion for our system, just for our system, the bill was passed $1.2 billion. Of that $1.2 billion, they spread it to the Act 51 formula. We only got 39% of that, which means we're 61% in the hole. So, you know, we're not having enough resources to meet our needs. And that's still the law that, that we use to distribute money in Michigan. I think it's important for us as a public agency, for the public to have an insight as to how we operate. Um, for instance, majority of the public doesn't even know how we pick our projects. They believe is the MDA director, the legislature, and the governor sitting in the room and, and picking projects. Uh, a part of our transparency plan is to create a statewide website where anybody in the state can go to. It, it will have a list of all the projects we have in, in, in the state from conception to conclusion. Every step of the way you can click on that project in the map and it'll show you where we are in the process. Are we in the planning process? Are we in the environmental process? Are we in the design process? How much have we expended to date? Are we on budget? Are we over budget? So that by the time you get to completion of that project, anybody can track it and see where we are in the process. And I think that's one way of trying to at least have the public be part of uh, what we do to understand how we do things. Um, again, I, I, I just think transparency is important. When you hear uh, people, you know, legislature or whoever, but, but general public say, well, MDOT is not an efficient organization to spend too much money. I, my challenge is, well, show me where I can cut $2.5 billion out of my budget to make up for what, you know, the proposal, then I'd be more than happy to, to have that conversation. But it, it's just not there. If you know the, the last administration, the, the governor was an accountant. And who better to find inefficiencies than accountants? So uh, it, it, the, the bottom line is that we just don't have enough resources to meet our needs. And that's where we are. On the diversity side, uh, about six, seven years ago, we, uh, we started this program called uh, MDOT HBCU uh, Recruitment Program. And what that program does is that we recruit students from HBCU school, Historical Black College schools. Uh, we have a partnership with the universities here in Michigan. The, the first group we brought in was about four students. We started with the University of Michigan. What we do is we bring them into Michigan. They stay on uh, campus. We we'll give them a job. So they get to learn civil engineering, how things work. And also, the university used that opportunity to see if they can recruit them to either transfer or come in for graduate uh, school. And we've got some success stories of both sides taking advantage of this program. And since then, um, I'd say we've had about almost 50 students come through in the last uh, six years. I believe this coming summer we're going to have about 20, 21 students uh, in the program. And it's also grown. We pretty much covered all the lower peninsula uh, uh, regions right now. We're going to have University of Michigan participating, Michigan State, Wayne State, Western Michigan, I believe Grand Valley and Saginaw Valley. So that the students are going to be spread out in these universities and they're going to be here all summer, uh, get some experience and go back. And I think again it helps us expose them to what we do uh, with the hope that when they graduate, they want to uh, pick MDOT as a place to, to come back to work.